we might form a system in which there's Jovian planets close in and terrestrial planets far out. That's very different from what we have here. Here, this is a reminder sort of system we have here. And uh, we might even have a system, if we had a lot of gas and dust to begin with, in which planets of such large mass are produced that they are stars. So the computer also makes double or multiple star systems in the appropriate cases. Now, if it is true, and we don't yet know it is true, but it's beginning to look as if it's true, that planets are a dime a dozen. No, you don't have a dime. A sixpence a dozen. Um, we have previously found that the steps necessary for the origin of life seem to be very easy, requires only the most common cosmic conditions. We know that for evolution we need time, but we have a lot of time. There are stars which are twice as old as the sun. We know that the development of intelligence, the evolution of our kind of thinking on the Earth has taken a long time to come into being, but it has come into being only halfway through the history of the sun. And other things being equal, it is probably better to be smart than to be stupid. Uh, and smart means being able to deal with the environment. Since we know that the laws of nature are by and large the same throughout the universe, then beings that evolve everywhere must be funneled in some kind of intellectual sense so that they think about the universe more or less in the same way. There will be limitations, of course. To some extent, this should happen. This kind of thinking suggests that not only might there be life on other planets, countless other planets, but also intelligent life. Beings as wise as we, as artistic, as ethical, as technological, interested as much as we in novels or music, and perhaps lots of other things as well. There should be some, many that are more backward than we, but because of the immense vistas of cosmic time, there should be many much more advanced than we. And if that's the case, it would be nice to uh, say hello to those fellows. They should not look like us. They will have evolved differently on a different planet. And we know that evolution has a strong random or stochastic component to it. But they may think enough like us to be able to make contact. Well, there are various ways of doing this. A very slow and not, not fully serious way is to put a message on a spacecraft which will wind up in interstellar space. It's a little bit like throwing a bottle into the cosmic ocean. The chance of it being picked up is small, but it is at least psychologically good for the stranded dweller on the desert island. He's making some effort to contact the cosmos. The first attempt to do that was on a spacecraft called Pioneer 10 and 11. And this is a plaque affixed to the exterior of that spacecraft. And uh, let me just very briefly say what this is about. This will be very brief. This says, here's our unit of time and space uh, in terms of the hydrogen atom. And down here it says, here's our solar system, sun and lots of planets strung out. The spacecraft was launched from the third planet, passed by the fourth, came close to the fifth, and then went into interstellar space. And there it is. Over here is a map of the positions and periods of regularly pulsing cosmic radio objects called pulsars. And uh, this part of the message says a little bit about when and where we are. And then over here at the right is the most obscure and mysterious part of the message, a man and a woman. They, of course, are apparent to us, but only because we happen to live here. It's very unlikely that there are human beings anywhere else. And so if there are any recipients of this message, they will wonder very much what this is. Are they holding it right side up? Uh, and uh, it will not at all be obvious that these are the creatures that launched the spacecraft. We, because space is so empty, Pioneer 10 and 11 and Voyager will never enter any other planetary system. And so we do not know that anyone will ever pick it up. And in fact, it seems unlikely. 
But one of the major reasons why we send such messages is not just to contact intelligence out there, but also to contact intelligence back here, to raise the cosmic consciousness of human beings. And here is an indication that, at least on Earth, the uh, Pioneer 10 greeting was uh, received with some degree of friendliness. This uh, is a billboard in Pasadena, California. Now, a more elaborate uh, attempt to communicate, but along the same lines, was on the Voyager spacecraft, as I mentioned before. And what we'd like to do now is to play an edited portion of a small part of the Voyager phonograph record. Phonograph record, you may remember, has greetings in many languages of human beings and also of whales to the cosmos. Uh, it uh, has 116 photographs on the record in audio form uh, about what the Earth is like. It has an hour and a half of the world's music, and it also has an elegant sound essay of the sounds of the Earth devised by Anne Drian of the United States. And we'd like to play a little bit of that uh, greeting to the cosmos. And I think I would like maybe two people to come up here and listen to it with me. I think I'll go around the front if I can. Um, and what I'd like you to do is to give me your impression of what the sounds are. You will have some bias because uh, you will be human beings having grown up on the Earth, and you will know sounds better than extraterrestrials. But still, it'll be interesting to see how well you can do. Oh, I see so many eager faces. I don't know who to choose. Um, can I pick you right here in the jacket and you right there in the red sweater with the pullover, please? And let's start the Voyager Sounds of Earth record. Well, maybe I can just ask you to tell me what uh, it sounds like. Hello. Hello, Lori. Let's listen to it. Water bubbling. Boiling water. Explosion. A house falling down. <laughs> A submarine. That this isn't what we intended at all. And if humans can't get it, extraterrestrials never will. Jungle, good, we agree on that. Who's that? Well, we certainly have the sense of some kind of life there. What's that? Chimpanzee is the suggestion. certainly into primates, into monkeys and apes. Remember, this is the Earth talking to the cosmos. Okay, now it gets Chimpanzee, it's proposed. Now the wind starts up. Someone is crying. Who's that? Uh, a wolf, a wild dog. That's good. Maybe not. Now there's a background noise. What's that? A heartbeat. The first human. dog before and now a domesticated dog. Have any idea what this is? No, that was actually an anvil. First making of metal. Morse code. Good. 